In this session, we'll learn how to use bioinformatics to design a diagnostic test called the Restriction Fragment Length Polymorphism Test. Restriction Fragment Length Polymorphism Testing, or RFLP, was commonly used in conjunction with PCR to identify certain variants that create or destroy restriction enzyme sites. When feasible, this provided a relatively simple diagnostic test. Increasingly, however, this process is less common in practice because microarray and DNA sequencing techniques are becoming widely utilized. However, it still provides a useful example to teach some bioinformatics principles. For this session, we'll assume some prep work. We'll assume that you've already downloaded the gene sequence file and that you've created or downloaded a protein sequence file associated with that gene. We'll also assume that you've identified a disease-causing variant. Sometimes you may need to identify more than one for this particular example to work. We'll also see that it's useful to use the protein sequence to find the site of the variant as well as the neighboring protein sequence. In earlier sessions, we've seen that the deletion of the phenylalanine at position 508 is a common disease-causing variant in the CFTR gene. So let's start by seeing if there's a possible RFLP site near that variation. So we'll reduce the sequence to only showing the open reading frame in frame one, as well as the coding sequence for that. We've also identified some of the neighboring sequence so that we can quickly find the positions that encode the Dell 508 site. So as we scroll down, we start to find the right neighborhood and here we find the phenylalanine at position 508. So now we're going to add to our display restriction enzymes that target sites of six or more base pairs. So now that we've done that, let's, we'll have to scroll back down just a little bit to find our site. But unfortunately, there are not any restriction enzyme sites near to the phenylalanine at 508. So let's go back to ClinVar and see if we can find another alternative. We'll broaden our search to expert panels and for simplicity, I, I just know that a good site happens to be the substitution um, that results in the change of the serine at 489 to a termination codon. So let's go back to the protein sequence and make sure that we know the neighborhood of amino acids within this. So we'll open up the protein sequence in Seq Builder. We'll go to position 489 and make sure that we're at the right position and then we'll look to make sure we also know some of the neighboring amino acids. So this is in a region that spells G-R-I-S and that'll be helpful as we try to find the correlating DNA sequence. So now when we go back to our DNA sequence we can find this G-R-I-S motif and we notice that there's a restriction enzyme site XMN1 Let's make sure we understand what the pattern is for that restriction enzyme. We go to the enzyme manager and we see that it looks for a GAA and then four of any nucleotides followed by TTC. So let's look at the pattern adjacent to this um, serine 489 position. We see this GAA pattern but there's not uh, appropriate sequence at the end. But we happen to notice that just upstream of that is another GAA. So let's see if maybe that is a better pattern. So it goes GAA and then GAAT, which are the four of any, and then TTC. So indeed that is the target site for the XMN1 enzyme. And then let's see what happens when we change the C at the appropriate position to an A. We see that the XMN1 site goes away. We also happen to see below that the encoding region go, ends with the termination. So now we feel that we've found the appropriate site. And let's um, again verify that changing that position removes the restriction site. Now we're going to save this DNA sequence as an alternative, as a new file for an upcoming exercise in which will simulate the remainder of the RFLP enzyme test. So let's save it with a naming convention that describes the substitution. Let's try this. 
we notice that Windows doesn't like the caret symbol, so we'll change to a convention that the Windows system will be more likely to accept. We make that change, we click OK, and now we've saved that file for a future exercise. The last thing I want to draw your attention to is the discrepancy in the numbering conventions. You can see that in Seek Builder, it describes the C at position 1598, but in ClinVar, it says that the C is at position 1466. But remember that there's 132 nucleotides before the start codon, and when you combine those two, you realize that you are indeed working with the same position. So in this session, we've learned how to design an RFLP diagnostic test.